So I am pretty much chronically online. I would say I never leave the internet, but I did a very interesting thing today. I decided to leave the internet at home. I left my phone at home and I took my camera and I took my microphone and I took a water bottle and I took a backpack, I took a banana and I ran away really as far as I could or as far as I wanted to go from my house um, because I am starting to feel suffocated by my things, by my computer, by technology, by everything really, uh, by the constant need for dopamine, I suppose is what everyone's talking about these days, the constant dopamine hits of social media, of being on Facebook, of just being online. Um, it really all started when I was a kid, you know, I played a lot of online games like Neopets and like to talk to my friends and it used to be a novelty it used to be something exciting as a kid uh, an entire world of of possibilities of adventure excitement these days not so much it's more of just a tool to unplug from everything really just unplug from your responsibilities your life and just sort of live on autopilot and you know, for the longest time, I thought the smartest people were the people who spent a majority of their time on the internet. I thought chronically online people were, you know, the smart people. And back in the day, I'm sure that was, to a certain degree, true. You know, people who spent a majority of the time online were, were trying to create new things on the internet for people to do, for people to consume. They had a vision. Um... That vision today is is very dystopian in my point of view. It's not something that I particularly enjoy anymore as much as I, I used to. Uh, but I'm addicted to it, as I think many people in the world are at the current time. They're, they're addicted to being online. They're addicted to sort of this nostalgic drip feed that the internet really is and what the internet stands for. It is no longer the internet that I grew up knowing and loving. It is today just sort of something you waste your life on. Uh, something you use to disconnect from the real world. Which is fine. I think every once in a while people deserve that disconnect. The real issue for me is I spend almost all of my time uh, on the internet and, and being afraid of going outside, agoraphobia, you know. I, I think COVID really did a number on me. It did a number on a lot of people. And for a lot of people, they went inside in 2020 and they they never came back out they never they haven't left yet and i'm I've, i'm one of those people who went inside um after having a very successful or somewhat successful social life i would go out with my friends i would party here and there i would you know be sociable um i would show up you know mentally i would show up you know I, these days i just physically show up i'm not mentally there and it's it's you know maybe it's a mental illness but I, I don't I don't know I, I think I've I've been depressed before you know after my dad passed away uh, I was depressed for a very long time I know what depression feels like uh, what I think I'm experiencing and a, and a lot of other people are experiencing is is sort of an addiction and I definitely know what an addiction feels like because I am now almost 270 days clean from nicotine and vaping and you know that's a whole that's a whole other conversation that's a whole other video but what i've learned in that time is that addiction you don't know you're addicted until you sort of leave the addiction and what i mean by that is like you know you're addicted right when when you're a vape when you're a vapor or a smoker or whatever you you know you're addicted 
but you, you it's not something you th- try to think about or try to remedy on a daily basis it's it's just something that's an afterthought it's in the background because your addiction takes over you know it takes over your life it takes over your mind it takes over your finances it just takes over addiction takes over it's devastating to your mental health your well-being and addiction can lead to depression but I don't think it always does. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I, I don't know. I'm just speaking my opinion, my personal experience here. And when I was an addict and after, after, and, and after conquering an addiction, um, you feel lost, right? You feel like you don't know where to go. Uh, you don't feel like you know what to do. You feel like You've lost something, and, and in a way you have. A piece of yourself has died, and it's not coming back. And it's just sort of you got to move on from that. you got to move on from that and become a new version of yourself, a stronger version of yourself that is more determined and more present every day. And present in the fact that you're saying no. And you're saying no to yourself over and over again, telling yourself, no, I can't have this. I won't have this. I'm a better person now than I was yesterday because I'm, I'm withholding this thing from, from me. And as an adult, uh, that's weird to parent yourself. <laughs> you know, I, my parents were never really the greatest in terms of that. But, you know, that's also another video. The point I'm really trying to make is the internet is a drug. Um, at the end of the day, it's no longer just the fun little hee-hee-ha-ha ha place we used to all go as kids um, and just sort of have fun. It's a drug. It's meant to keep you addicted. It's meant to keep you on it. It's meant to keep your attention. Um, and it doesn't want you to leave because if you leave, the whole illusion sort, sort of starts to crumble uh, and you begin to find yourself again the longer... You are away from that. Your disillusionment sort of fades away. And that person you were when you were addicted begins to die. They, they begin to die. And you become a different version of yourself who can see the addiction, who can see from the outside looking in how damaging all of that was for you. But in the moment, in the time that you were there, you were present... It was just another thing, really. It was just another fun afternoon, a uh, fun day, which these days it's not. I mean, I wake up and the first thing I reach for is my cell phone. It's I, I, I reach for my cell phone and I'll spend hours really just scrolling, especially on my days off. I won't go out. I won't do anything. I, I want to be a content creator. I want to follow these dreams, but my cell phone is killing me. It's, it's robbing. It's not killing me. <laughs> it's not actually killing me. It's killing me metaphorically. It's stopping me from doing the things I want to do and being the person who I want to be, which is not really depression. It's addiction, right? Um, and thank God I've been addicted to other things before and beaten those addictions. And I, I now have the understanding and the tools to beat it. Um, and being chronically online is just not good. And I think people who are chronically online are always online because they're looking for an answer to a problem that cannot be solved by being chronically online. It can only be solved by leaving. And that's sort of the great... The big secret, right, is that, you know, positive reinforcement, and I think visualiz- visualization does work to a certain degree. I think if we want something bad enough and if we visualize it, uh, circumstances not withholding, we'll get it. And we, whether it takes a year, five years, ten years, is irrelevant because if it's something that you truly want and desire, you will have it. And... I'm not talking in terms of like (laughs) being a celebrity or being famous. I'm talking in terms of like being a creative. And I think that's really what 
visualization should be used for is uh, everyone should be a creative. Everyone should be creating something, whether that's a stupid video um, on TikTok or Instagram or whatever is irrelevant. I think we should be a lot more present in creating instead of consuming. Um, we are going to be entering, or we are probably already in, a creator economy where a lot more people are going to be doing what I'm doing um, because of the ease of access to doing it. I mean, I'm recording in 4K right now, something I never <laughs> would have imagined I would be doing. Uh, but here I am. I'm now recording in a quality that's better, 10 times better, than what they were recording in in the 80s, um, 90s even, early 2000s even. I am... I have access to microphones that are, are better than what they were using at that point in human history. I have access to editing software, the same editing software that would take four or five computers to edit on just one simple GPU, CPU. Um, I have access to all of that. And day after day, I don't create. <laughs> I don't use these tools. I I use these tools that I have at my disposal for fucking Fortnite, <laughs> for Instagram, for um, Facebook, you know, for for Neopets even to this day, I still I use it to check my email, and and I sit there and I make fun of boomers for doing the same thing, but I have become the very thing that I told myself I never would. I would I always told myself I would be this guy, and and for the longest time I haven't been him. I've sort of locked him away. But it's time to it's time to let him out, you know. It's time to stop being so afraid of the world, stop caring what people think of me, enjoying the little time that I have on this planet and creating something that will potentially live on for hundreds of years on the online space that is created. Um, one can only hope, but I think YouTube is the social media platform that is here to stay. I think it has proven itself that it's here to stay, which is why I think it is absolutely fundamental that you begin to upload your content to YouTube because it's, I'm reaching a point where I now have videos on the platform that are almost 20 years old um, that I can still go back and watch and enjoy with friends, family, acquaintances, whatever. Um, just silly little videos I made 20 years ago, and I haven't been making enough. I haven't been putting myself out there making enough because of fear, a uh, fear of what people may say or what they might think of me. But as the old adage goes, those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. I think I said that right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh, you, you get what I'm saying. Those who matter don't mind. Those who mind don't matter. That. Uh, And it's just like this, this, uh, and social media really, you know, is, is the big one here that, that if I could, if I could tell you, if I could give you any advice that the thing you should quit is social media because it's the devil. Excuse me. Uh, social media is, if there were such a thing as a devil, whether you believe in a devil or not, social media is pretty much devil incarnate. Um, not every social media platform but, you know, you know the ones I'm talking about. And I, I'm not going to go into, you know, detail of what they are. TikTok, uh, Facebook. You know, uh, Facebook and, and TikTok are really the big ones right now of, of wasting time. Instagram these days, you know, I think Instagram has a lot more potential than Facebook ever will at this point. Facebook is just dying a slow death it just refuses to let go uh i don't know why that is i think it's just because of messenger i think messenger is really just keeping the whole platform alive because without messenger uh, facebook is i mean they don't have farmville anymore so what what's the point you know without farmville facebook is just another social media app you know it needs more games it needs for me it needs more games i think facebook really thrived in the era of its flash games so bring flashback whether whether or not you know that's possible or not just bring just bring some just bring poking back uh i think it's strayed too far away from the goofy side of everything everything's sort of just become so corporate and boring and lame and to be addicted to that is just like i'm kind of like disappointed in myself that i'm addicted to such a lame 
corporatized, bastardized version of the internet that I grew up with 10, 15 years ago. But, you know, that at the end of the day, I'm, I'm making steps to uh, to move on, to move on from that uh, and be a better version of, of me. And, uh, you know, God damn it, B. I'm outside. I'm, like I said, I'm chronically online. A bee just scared the shit out of me. But that's, uh, you know, you should be scared. Fear is a motivator at the end of the day. It motivates me to overcome that fear and uh, basically just stop being online all the time. Addiction sucks. You're addicted, not depressed, probably, is what I'm beginning to, uh, to find out. Just, just take a break from the internet for a while and you know not you don't have to get off youtube because i'm on youtube at the end of the day and i need you to watch these videos so i can you know fulfill that part of me but honestly like youtube is is reaching the point and a lot of people shit on youtube because of the algorithm but really honestly like the the algorithm i think is working better than ever i think the the algorithm is the youtube algorithm is one of the best on the platform if you're an adult, if you're a kid, I mean, that that's, I don't even know. Uh, Skibbity Toilet, Baby Gronk, Rizzed Up, Livy Dunn, stuff like that. Yeah, that, that algorithm is scary. I don't know what's happening with kids, but, you know, if you're an adult, you know how to you look things up. And I, I was reading this study that, like, kids barely know how to Google. They, they go to, like, TikTok and they look stuff up, like, how to tie a shoe. They will go. They won't go to Google anymore. Nobody's Googling things in, in the younger generations. They're TikToking it. <laughs> They're learning from TikTok, uh, which is probably why they want to ban it. I mean, yeah, you got a whole generation of, of kids growing up on TikTok, which is a scary thought. Um, and they're going to be addicts. And, you know, it's going to be a scary world if you're chronically online. Uh, the outside world will always be here. Let's go back outside. Um, and that's sort of the message of the day. That's going to be the message forever from here on out. Go outside or just, you know, get off the internet. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, stay safe out there. See you in the next one.